Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel where we discuss about programming languages and other funny stuff. Today we won't be digging deep into programming languages, but we will see how to serve thousands of different websites using a single Next.js installation. So let's get started. To serve many different websites from a single Next.js installation, we will be using Krabs, which is a library that I've personally built and it's hosted for free on GitHub. So it's open source, you can browse the source code and install it using npm. So yeah, let's start from there. Um, let's create a new project and call it, let's say, uh, multi-tenant Next.js. Great. Now that we have our very basic Next.js project, uh, we can proceed by reading the documentation provided inside the Krebs repository. Um, we will basically need to create a .krebs.js file, which will contain the configuration for our tenants, where every single tenant is basically a website served by our Next.js installation. I've already created a configuration, so let me paste it uh, inside a new file. So as you can see, we will basically have two different websites. The first one will be English Setter Lovers, and we will talk about English Setters. I love that kind of dogs, I love them. And the second one will be Veggies, so we will talk about vegetables. And every time that we will call that URL locally, so local.englishsetterlovers.com, we will serve this website from our Next.js installation. And every time we will call local dot, let's say cabbage or local dot pumpkin or local dot veggies dot it dot com, we will serve the veggies website, which also comes from the same Next.js installation as English Setter Lovers website. So if we now want to proceed using Krabs, we will need to create a custom server and we will also need to install Krabs and Express.js, which will be used as a custom web server for serving our Next.js application. Okay, um, now we can proceed by creating a custom server. So we can create an index.js file and start by importing Express. Then next. and crabs. Okay, uh, so now we'll need to define in which environment we are currently running our application. So let's start by typing const dev equals process dot env dot node env. It's not equal to production. That way, uh, when we will be running in production, the dev environment variable uh, will be equal to false. So we will know uh, in which environment we are. Okay, so moving on, we will need to create a new next application. So const app equals next. And we will pass our dev variable inside of it. Now we can create uh, the server itself. So let's create a new function. Uh, this is an asynchronous function, so we will need a try catch for uh, you know catching any kind of error that can occur. And for now, we will only log uh, if any error is occurring. Okay, um, so basically, uh, we are uh, setting up a very basic custom server for Next.js. If you have any doubt of how mm, these methods are working, I suggest you to look at Next.js documentation because they will explain it way better than I can. So let's proceed. Okay, so basically what we are done here is a catch all route, meaning that every time that we call any route for a uh, our application, uh, that route will be served by Krabs. So Krabs acts uh, like a middleware in that case. 
Okay, so now we can proceed by organizing the folder structure. And in order to do that, we can delete the index.js file that we have by default inside the pages directory and also the API folder inside our pages directory. And after that, we can open our crabs file and copy the name of the first tenant and create a new folder with the same name. Let's do the same with the veggies. And now we can create an index.js file inside English Setter Lovers. And we can do the same for veggies. Okay, um, so now we can think of veggies and English Setter Lovers as two complete different pages directory. Uh, meaning that our index.js file will be the index only for that website. If we are inside the Vegas tenant, we won't be able to render pages coming from English Setter Lovers and vice versa. We can test if everything is working properly by running node index.js. Okay, so now the server has started and let me copy this address and here we are hello world from English setter lovers and let's see if we can print hello world from veggies uh, by typing local dot cabbage dot eat dot com yeah and as you can see it's working fine so now we may want to create some different pages and components for our websites. In particular, uh, we may want that one website will be using, uh, let's say, Tailwind CSS and the other one Chakra UI. So let's do that by creating two different layouts and let's see how to apply that layout to our website dynamically depending on the tenant that uh, we are running on. So uh, let's create a new folder called components. And let's add a new subdirectory called layouts. Okay, so inside our layouts folder, we can create a new layout for our Veggies website. Um, I've already prepared something, so I'll just paste it here. And as you can see, we're importing Tailwind uh, using an external CDN uh, because, you know, we don't have much time. And let's do the same with the English Setter Lovers layout. So as you can see, um, now we are using Chakra UI and we need to install it for uh, our project. Okay, so now we have all the dependencies we need and we can go on. We can move now to our app.js file which, as you can see, it's still the standard one from the default Next.js installation. And we can start to customize it uh, to dynamically import the required layout depending on the tenant uh, we are running our website. So let's start by importing dynamic from Next.js. That way we will import our um, layout dynamically and yeah, uh, let's proceed by importing our layouts. Okay, uh, so now we can wrap our layouts inside an object. And we will see why we need that in just a second. Let's rename our function to app which I personally prefer. And now, yeah, um, let's take the tenant from our page props. You may be wondering where this is coming from. And we will see that uh, in just one minute. And as you can see, we are basically uh, passing the tenant name uh, as a prop and we will use it for catching the right layout from our object. So let's proceed.
Okay, so now, as said before, we need to pass tenant as a prop to our app function. So we will need to use the get initial prop built in function. And if you're wondering where the tenant variable comes from, uh, it's appended by Krabs to the default request object. Okay, um, so now we are basically wrapping uh, our page component with the correct layout. We are passing the tenant from get initial props uh, to our app so that when we are running our application, we always know which is the tenant we are currently running on. And before testing this, we actually need to make a little change here because as you can see, we are importing a component that doesn't exist uh, yet, and we do the same with the Vegas layout, and let's try to run the server. Okay, so now that the server has started, let's try to refresh. And yeah, as you can see, I completely forgot to remove this. And let me find it. Okay, and this one. Okay, my fault. Now it should be working. Okay. Yeah, as you can see, the style has changed by a bit. So now we can implement our navbar and menu uh, components. So let's create a new folder called, in that case, menu. And let's add an index. And once again, I've already prepared something. So let me copy this and let me do the same for navbar okay now let's try oh sorry we, we we first need to enable this and this one okay let's try now yeah as you can see we now have two different uh, navigation bar um, the first one this has been created using Chakra UI and this one using Tailwind CSS. Now let's customize a bit uh, both home pages. So let's go back to our Vegas index. And as you can see, we are importing two new components. And of course the build is breaking because we haven't created them yet. So let's create them. Okay, and the second one actually is not a component, but it's an array of objects. So let's create it inside a new folder called data. Okay, now let's make a little change here. And save. Now let's try to see our new homepage. And as you can see now we have three blog posts and if we try to click on one of those we will see an error because of course we haven't created yet uh, the single blog page so uh, let's create it okay here we are Okay, so now let's try to edit just a bit uh, the homepage of our English Setter Lovers website. And yeah, let's do that. Okay, now it's a bit better. So far, we've seen how to create many different websites using a single Next.js installation. And this can be really useful if, let's say, you are working in an agency and you have a white label design system and you want to customize only that white label design system for each customer you have. So you can uh, create only one component library and create different websites uh, sharing every single component and customizing it uh, for every single customer. So um, that can be the case where you want to use a single Next.js installation because of course if you have a bug on let's say the button component you can fix the bug and make just one deploy and fix the bug on every single website that relies on that component.
you also have to keep in mind that using crabs for creating multi-tenant websites comes with some caveats. Uh, for example, you lose access to uh, static site generation and incremental static regeneration. You only have access to server-side rendering because, of course, you are creating a very dynamic website and Next.js is not able yet uh, to statically render uh, every single website that you're working on. And I'm working on that maybe in the next few months. We may be able to fix that, so please make sure to follow the project. And you can find the link to GitHub in the description field below. And please star if you appreciated that uh, middleware for uh, serving many different websites from your Next.js installation. And please write in the comment if you have any suggestion because I'll be working on that specific middleware by following the community needs. So yeah, uh, that was all for today. Please let me know if you enjoyed the video and see you next time.